going to go through a lot of stuff really fast. I'm going to spend a little bit more time on the first two or three slides because that's the real, real idea of the images. So, what I'm here we go. Is once upon a time, architects felt like they had to design the project both cities and buildings. So that ended, really, to the most part, with hermetically sealed buildings. It's going back, to a certain degree, with sustainability. So what you see is the administration building on campus. And if you can imagine why it's seen here, the uh, architect of the campus, standing up a copy today, saying in 1924, what do we do? He knew he had to respond to climate. He went to Europe. He did his architects go to Europe, look to Europe, and found Madrid. I don't know if it looks like the same color to you, but it is. Madrid and Lubbock have similar climates. So he matched where the administration came from. He went to Madrid for an exploration. So that carried through campus. So part of that was covered walkways. We know shade is important in some way. So our major churches carried that through. Major institutions, as did the Holy Center, the Deep Low, uh, Lubbock High School. So you, you see this sort of Spanish influence that came directly from, even though you see it in some days, the more style. So the Texas Courthouse Square, Spanish inspired. Oh, it's climate, Spanish inspired. And over here you see uh, Lubbock. And what was one city block plaza in the middle of the city? There was the Capitol Courthouse. Ultimately torn down that street, opened a new courthouse, taking up what was that plaza. So here's our suggestion. Let's go back to Madrid. Who is a city of courtyards? Courtyards make sense in our climate, and protect you from that wind and the harshness, right? And we take what is alley, see the plus sign? It's not all that hard, easy to see, but downtown Lubbock is a city of alley, alleys and a plus sign. Uh, and we've had some installations there. Those alleys are wind tunnels. So, <clears throat> another thing you need to know about downtown is 94% paid. So here's our here's our suggestion. We, we start closing alleys at the perimeter to block the wind, keep them connected in the middle of the courtyard and the center of the block. That does a number of things for us. Okay, Carmel by the sea is also. And these courtyards can take on various personalities, whether they're commerce, performance, passive, active, depending on their setting and what they're next to. Uh, and this would be an example where we were doing this. Convincing our developers this is a good idea. So we're saying this is the way you get four blocks to work like one block is a big project rather than super block, which is the term that's being put in the right now. So that's something what uh, our little interconnected courtyards would be. You keep the city together, bridges in. Most of the two tall buildings are pioneer in, in uh, NPS. And then if you take this particular four block where the courthouse is, all you really have to do. Close one street, take out one building, connect it to another four blocks. And you begin to get, see, here it is in 3D, there's the courthouse. There's a photo of our own central plaza. We can now get, we, we, we looked at Clyde Warren Park, it's inspiration, Discovery Green and Houston as well. We can begin to get that central plaza back in downtown Lubbock. Interconnected. To, this would be one of the one blocks with a courtyard in the middle. That's the OKT Penny's building, what used to be little, but still is little shops and restaurants, but still enough land that you can get new development. This is when we converted an alley to a performance space. It's a uh, temporary urbanism. Uh, that's where we learned that these were the wind tunnels. That first hand experience. Uh, and that was it. Go back. But so here we are. Argues that courtyards and plazas can and should be developed for friendly, dense, and sustainable. So that was probably 30 seconds. 